welcome to my channel. My name is Violet if you're new here. So glad to see you. This is the second video on my Buller 2020 series and I am going to be calling it Why Millennials Love Bullers So Gosh Darn Much. This is going to include a history and explanation. If that sounds good to you, please give this video a great big like just right there. The YouTube algorithm likes that, and if you do it, it's going to get shared out to more people. So I am filming inside my 1973 green bowler Penelope, which we have been working on and retooling as time goes by. She's got some new lights going on and has already been on one adventure this summer. But today we want to talk about her origin story. Do -do 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 -do. So from the very beginning, I want to give some basic context. What the heck? What's a travel trailer? On the most basic level, it is a road vehicle to provide a place to sleep which is more comfortable and protected than a tent. This definition from Wikipedia gives us a jumping off point. The history of travel trailers specifically begins back to the traveling caravans of the Romani people as well as showmen in traveling shows. Ringling Brothers Circus, maybe? That kind of thing? When did these moving homes and places of business become a holiday refuge? Wikipedia can answer that too. There isn't a bowler specific page, but there is one for travel trailers. They actually call it traveling caravans. Caravanning. And I think the word van comes from caravan, which is cool. So is this really just a grandfather of the modern van? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. The world's first leisure trailer was built by the Bristol Wagon and Carriage Works 1880 for Dr. William Gordon Stables. He was a popular author of teenage adventure fiction and ordered a gentleman's caravan. It was an 18-foot design. He later worked with Thomas Holding to establish the Camping and Caravanning Club to give due recognition to this emerging pastime. So 140 years later, the basic concept remains the same. A cozy living space on an axle pulled on the road behind a car or slightly larger than a car vehicle. Fiberglass trailers as we see them today emerged from the once robust middle class, having both the time and the resources to vacation and play. From the 1920s to can tourists to our current glamping phenomenon that we all see and appreciate on Instagram, it would seem the travel trailer is not a fad, or if it is a fad, it is certainly one that is re-emerging. So let's answer the question, who invented the bowler? Canadian Ray Aleko is the man responsible for the bowler. The bowler inspired a lot of other campers that came later, such as the Trillium, the Bigfoot, and the Scamp. If you have other history information for me, and if I've made a mistake, please let me know down below. I'll link the websites I've used in the description below if you want to learn a little bit more, as this is just a general overview. Bowler was a catchy name picked by Rialeco for his 1964 slingshot, which was also made out of fiberglass. Now this did really well, and so he was able to, to, to create the Bowler Manufacturing Company. The Bowler Manufacturing Company he was able to create. It seems that Ray worked for Structural Glass Limited and was responsible for designing a fiberglass septic tank. So there is credence to the rumor that the Bowler design emerged from there. However, it seems like Rayaleco wanted to go camping with his family and had the idea to build a travel trailer to keep everyone warm and dry. And as soon as it was completed in design, it just seemed like such a good idea that he had to go ahead and start a company and give us these cool things in mass production. Once the egg emerged, he clearly knew he had a winner. Looks timeless. I'm sure it looked timeless in 1968. It looks timeless in 2020. You could plunk it out of any era and it seemed like it would fit. It's like a giant ostrich egg or something. So I'm guessing his first camping trip with his family in the Buller was a success. In its first year, Buller Manufacturing might have produced three units a week. There was a huge demand he couldn't keep up, so he opened manufacturing throughout Canada and the United States. The grand total of bowlers is most likely under 10,000 that were ever produced. This is a rare, rare Pokemon indeed. What happened to bowler manufacturing? Well, in 1973, there was an oil embargo under President Nixon. What that did was actually drive up the price of oil and limit the amount that was available such that traveling for leisure no longer made sense. It was a hard decade. There was It was a long time before we had any kind of economic recovery. And by the time we did, we were already more into air travel. So families of four could pretty inexpensively fly across Canada and the United States to go on their vacations. And there was less appeal to driving Griswold family style to get to their location. I don't know, maybe people in the 80s and 90s liked their space more than people in the 60s and 70s. But here in 2020, I definitely like to cozy up with my people once in a while, read some books. 
It's good times. I can understand changing tastes and passing trends, yet despite this, these hardy trailers continue to emerge every spring. Shiny as a new penny. Somebody out there still loves bowlers. In fact, a lot of people out there still love bowlers. If you love bowlers, give this video a like and comment below. Tell me what year, what color, and what your favorite place to go with with your bowler is. I want to know. So every road trip I've taken, every campsite I've gone to, every Walmart and Superstore and Chapters visit, there's always a bowler emblem somewhere. It is in the Canadian consciousness. It's on our artwork whenever we think holiday. The little round trailer with the door and the hitch is kind of one of the pictures that springs to mind. It is interlocked with the idea of the Canadian wilderness and vacation habit. Which might be why I'm obsessed with my bowler. But let me elaborate. The bowler remains to this day a hearty recollection of excellent craftsmanship and innovation. Here, stares and smiles greet these rolling eggs as there's something uncanny and familiar about them. With a 50-year history, the company and its fiberglass trailers have their own lore. People still aren't 100% sure where exactly the design came from. Was it from Europe? Was it actually from the septic tanks? Was bowler truly the first one? Ones? We think so, but if you have some other ideas, let me know. Only 10,000 were made, so having a bowler is pretty special. You're in a very small, unique club. And there's Facebook groups dedicated to finding and counting remaining units that are still roadworthy. I think there's 650 that have been counted so far. And there's a Facebook page, so if you want to join in the fun and see other people's bowlers, and get yours counted, I will link that down below. Maybe your grandparents went camping and slept in the impossibly narrow bunks. Whatever the case, these trailers are novel, special, and have that distinct Canadian identity. You know, a lot of the time, what is, I think to myself, what does it mean to be Canadian? And I can say, well, beavers, maple syrup, snow, Canada goose jackets, bowlers. It feels pretty wholesome. And then let's move a little more general. What is the fascination with vintage fiberglass trailers? Trillium scamps, bowlers, and Bigfoots are great conversation starters and pervasive in 2020. First, I think it's a callback to nostalgia, to long summer afternoons camping, to the safety of the hideout, the security of a home away from home. There's a lovely feeling and sense of timelessness inherent to these trailers. Whether you're inside them or watching them drive by on the road, I am sure it will make you smile. I also suggest that as our daily lives are filled ever more with complicated technology that is not user repairable and expensive to replace, there is some comfort in having something that you know does not have impossibly complicated parts that you can learn work with. So my husband learned how to wire to get the lights working properly, and I learned how to use a sander and a paint roller. Now did I do an excellent job? No I didn't, but this is for camping, I mean who cares? This is our project. We have ownership over it. We get to learn new skills. Right now it's my YouTube office. So I think I think it's done a pretty good job for me. Let me uh, include the card here if you want to see the lovely job I did sanding and painting the bowler. This is our trailer after all. Warts and all. Thanks, Penelope. So what now for bowler? New bowlers are being made, but they're not called bowlers anymore. They're called armadillos, and they are being produced in Enderby, British Columbia, which is under an hour away from where I grew up, which is pretty cool to me. It truly is something that seems to be a regional DNA kind of situation. So these armadillos use the original fiberglass mold from the bowler to create something that looks very similar, but is more space age for sure. I mean, the round porthole window is definitely a step away from the square one we have here. And there's a lot more modern amenities like hideaway toilets and more storage and LED lighting. So I would definitely check them out if you can't find a vintage one that you're happy with or if you want to see how to really glamp it up and keep all your necessities of life, such as they are. As we face the strange future emerging in 2020, I predict we're all going to be camping more for our holidays because we can't leave our countries. So why not go camping, right? With air travel severely limited and many places re-entering and leaving and then re-entering quarantine, the time for road travel has re-emerged like a phoenix bursting through the ashes. And if you want to follow my bowler adventures, I am releasing one video a week on Mondays relating exclusively to the wonderful bowler and our camping adventures. Share with me in the comments below if you're dreaming of camping this summer. Just, just down there. Let me know what your plans are if you have a travel trailer, if you're going to be tenting up, where you're going to go, what you want to see. I would love to know what everyone's up to for summer 2020. Thank you and have an amazing day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.